Let's check the sound. How's the sound? Ah, so good to be with you in this timeless moment of now. Beloved community, I am so grateful to live another day, to wake up. This is how I wake up every day and I say thank you. Great mother for another day to be alive and another day to share this sacred time of communion together. And I'm so grateful that this topic resonates with you because we're going to go deep, but we're also going to touch the sweetness, this divine sweetness that sacred feminine offers us, that nectar for our souls that strength of beauty, the power of dynamic faith, right? So yes, we're going to dive deep, deep into the waters of the sacred feminine and why it is a matter of whether we are going to evolve through this dark death and rebirth cycle or whether we are going to accelerate to the point of our extinction truly truly revolutionary times that we live in so yes we're going to go dive deep into the depths wherever transmission is going to take us but we're also going to touch and drink from the sweet sweet remembrance that this life is here to be meant as an adventure of consciousness and we're meant to evolve through joy yes suffering is very very necessary but we are meant to evolve through joy through ecstasy even this is the message of the sacred feminine welcome beloveds this is katarina i am so happy to be with you Sound is great. Sound is great. I love it. Let me know where you are logging in from. What countries do we have here? Uh, what countries, what continents? Since we are all citizens of this world, we are one human family. One human family. I am currently live streaming from the Southern California. There's a beautiful sunshine outside, a little bit brisk. It's the beginning of March where this is my favorite time of the year, beloveds, because you, you begin to feel the pulse of the very, very beginning of spring and the birds are singing. And there is this first promise of renewal that is offered to us through the beauty and the mystery of nature. So in this transmission dedicated entirely to the sacred feminine, you can substitute sacred feminine for mother nature. When I refer to the, to the supreme divinity, that is everywhere as within as without i call supreme divinity the mother right you can substitute exactly the same mother nature everything that you see is nature we are part of nature we're part of the mother and i'd love to share with you these three essential principles that are embedded in nature and when we remember and then align and then anchor 
ourselves to these three essential principles. We begin to experience this very real guidance on the moment by moment. We are beginning to experience this very real divine protection. And we begin to experience a very real fulfillment and a sense of aliveness that all great mystics that ever lived, mystics like Hafiz and Rumi, right? And Aurobindo and modern mystics. My favorite uh, modern mystic is Andrew Harvey, anything he wrote. There's this sweetness of living your life as a beautiful, divine, very intimate relationship with one great unity, also known as the great beloved in the Sufi tradition. And in the exact measure of us forgetting these three essential principles. The result of this forgetting collectively and then individually is the equal measure of our confusion, deep sense of overwhelm, and maybe this experiencing of feeling disempowered disempowerment, defeated, and utterly unprepared for these times. So let's begin. This is just an introduction I'm painting with very brush strokes. Let's begin by arriving here. And every time we give a voice to the sacred feminine, we are touching the holy of the holiest. So I invite you to bring your consciousness right here, right now. Imagine that we are entering the temple of the sacred feminine. We're entering the temple through our reverence and our willingness to be an empty cup and to, re to receive something that is specifically for us. And let's remember the greatest ally we have that will never leave us through this incarnation. And that ally is often overlooked. And it's this ally of our breath. And let's begin by taking deep breaths together, arriving in the fullness of our presence. In with the peace, out with the stress. And let's begin to release through our breath any sense of overwhelm that you may have been experiencing since the year 2020, since the year 2015, since the year 2012, since the year 2000. Let's begin to consciously ask our body-mind to release the feeling of overwhelm, the feeling of being burdened by the times that we find ourselves in. Let's begin to release the feeling of mm, doubt, whether you have or whether I have, whether we have collectively what it takes to continue moving through this death and rebirth, this birth canal that humanity is going through. And let's feel into those feelings. It's a mix of overwhelm and a mix of psychological fatigue. And it's a mix of maybe a little bit of despair, maybe a little bit of hope, hopelessness. If we don't dare to enter these feelings fully, they continue to build in their strength. And if we don't dare to feel those feelings fully, we create more and more 
separation between us and the physical world. We're afraid to enter our ordinary life just as it is with that deep sense of trust and curiosity to be ready to remember why we're here really why now right so this is a simple practice of of choosing to feel the feelings oh my my entire lower back got activated with this feeling of tension simply through naming this overwhelming feelings of the fatigue of being human right now. These feelings are valid. They're valid, valid, and they need to be acknowledged in order for us to open the capacity to breathe through whatever is arising, right? So if you feel tired of being human right now, I want you to know I feel that sense of fatigue in your soul. And I want you to know it is okay to feel that. It is very human. And after we validate and acknowledge these feelings that arise, 1111 here, I also want to acknowledge the desire of your soul to show up for this conversation. In whatever degree you are currently in relationship with the sacred feminine, the sacred feminine is awakening in all of us as a sweet remembrance of a different kind of life, as a sweet remembrance, sweet reassurance that we are not a lonely orphans floating in space on a rock at any moment endangered to be hit by the meteor comet or meteorite right there is a deeper intelligence that is embedded in every cell of our being there is a deeper meaning for our lives there is a deeper meaning of everything you had to survive and endure and let go and surrender to be right here right now to the point of your consciousness to be ready to experience the sacred feminine that is here on the planet some people say that sacred feminine have been have been missing from the planet and i have a different perspective on that of course it's just my human perspective my understanding is humanity forgot and has been disconnected from a live intimate relationship with the sacred feminine and the sacred feminine the divine mother who is omniscient, omnipresent, all-knowing, self-organizing intelligence of oneness. You can substitute oneness or unity or one unified field for the term that I use, Divine Mother. It's the same thing. If we call oneness another term that has a more intimate relationship, I would give it the name Divine Mother. From my understanding and my perspective, humanity, it was also a part of evolution of consciousness for us to devolve, to go into the descent, into the dark chapter of the human history of forgetting our relationship with the sacred feminine. And the sacred feminine is the most... The most patient of all patient, the most humble of most humble, the most loving of most loving, so patient sacred feminine is that it will honor humanity's journey into the great depths of forgetting, into the great separation from its mother. 
because the sacred feminine knows there comes a point when the suffering in the humanity becomes so unbearable. Humans begin to lose faith in anything outside of themselves and they begin to turn individually one by one and then collectively they begin to to make this great return to the sacred feminine within their hearts. It's this great journey from living through our intellect, through our minds, through our doing. This great return into the sacred chambers of our hearts where the sacred feminine can truly be found in our hearts. So we're witnessing this great return and we're witnessing it from a different level of awareness. Those of you who have been on this path of great return for the last 20, 30, 10, 15 years, you have been prepared to be these fully lit pillars of consciousness. You have been strategically placed in your communities to radiate your harmonious consciousness, to stabilize the field of the community that, that where you're placed. You're also known as light workers, star seeds, mystical souls, old souls, authentic beings who live true to your heart wisdom. I'm going to speak to you, my fellow light workers, first, because it is through us holding the vision of the sacred feminine returning and blossoming and breaking through the constraints of any kind of fearful, egoic construct. It's us holding that vision every single day from the moment we rise to the moment we enter the sleep world. And then not only holding the vision, but continually surrendering our individual will, our individual small plans for the will of the sacred feminine that is moving through the physical vessels, you and I. So not only we're holding the vision, we're also going through the process of becoming large enough energetic vessels to channel bigger and bigger power of the sacred feminine divine Shakti, that life force that has a capacity to heal wounds, to heal our psyche, to heal our communities, to bring us back to the true vision. And not only that, we're all being called to be visible with our spiritual knowledge, with our embodied wisdom, with our gifts, and to be of service. Whether you are on the path of spiritual activism, sacred leadership, spiritual healing arts, helping people to connect with their bodies, helping people kill their trauma. This is the time where the sacred feminine is working through the light workers. So we become the emanation of the sacred feminine living in form. And then for everyone who is going through their deep, deep soul awakening process right now and who is finding themselves in this profound place of inner Sometimes, sometimes I find myself gr grasping for the word 
there and it's not coming. But you know, you find yourself in that place of, of inner death, of dying to the old, of dying to the old, uh, old patriarchal, very ego driven reality where you live for yourself alone. And no matter, no amount of power or pleasure or money or pride or significance can feel this gnashing hole in your soul. And you ask yourself, is there another way? Is there another way for me to be my authentic self? Is there another way for me to find joy? So you're on the path, you're searching for joy, something so much deeper than just happiness. You want joy, you want fulfillment, you want that sense of wholeness, a sense of inner completeness. That's where the conversation of the sacred feminine becomes so alive for you. And there are three essential principles that the sacred feminine emanates. This is going to be probably a deeply layered conversation. And I'll do my very, very best to express it with clarity. So let's dive into the three principles and why the sacred feminine, why is return to that energy that is emanation of an awakened heart is literally the decisive factor of the future of humanity. Whether we're going to self-destruct like five other civilizations before us, each wiped out from the planet Earth with very few traces left behind, or whether we are collectively change our future by changing our actions in each moment. Yeah. How powerful. So the sacred feminine, and another way to say it, beloved, it's the feminine face of divinity. And I could take another five hours just to give you a cultural, historical, archaeological evidence of the very first belief and cosmology and ideology and belief systems of the first people of ancient people. They were all revering a mother creator. It was all a mother spirituality. And the first principle of the sacred feminine is the principle that we're going to call law of unity. The second principle for those of you who love to receive itemized knowledge, I'm going to call, I'm going to name this principle and then we're going to go step by step. The first principle is law of unity. The second principle is the law of rhythm. And the third principle is the love of the dance. And I first read about these three essential laws through one of my favorite mystical teachers, Andrew Harvey. And I keep sharing his book, the book called Return to the Mother, Return of the Mother. This is a very profound masterpiece writing of a devotee of the great mother, Andrew Harvey. He's one of the most passionate speakers, renowned mystical teachers on the planet. And I recommend everyone to read this book. Another book that I recommend is by another great mystic 
Sri Ayur Arubindo, and the book is called The Mother. He's also a great devotee of the Great Mother. Now, Sri Ayur Arubindo has lived through the most turbulent times. He has lived through the World War I, World War II, when Nazis entered, uh, entered the world. He has lived through the times of Hitler, through the times of uh, he was imprisoned for his political activism. He, he was bitten. He was um, persecuted. He lived in immense poverty. He, lives in, he lived in persecution, as I said. This is the being. If, if we want to understand the level of sacrifice that is often required on the path of true mystic, our hearts would be filled with a sense of reverence and devotion for a profound freedom that we currently have to access the sacred teachings. And yes, we live in what looks like apocalypse, apocalypse times. And this is why the, the, these teachings of the sacred feminine become visible to us. They arrive to us to give us a spiritual nutrition, to give us direction for our mind, to remind us what's important. So the very first spiritual law of the sacred feminine is unity. This is a sign of true self-realization. When our spiritual eyes begin to get open by the grace of the sacred feminine, not by our willpower, not by our truly spiritual disciplines, prayer, all of that is helpful, but everything that we are given on the path of self-realization is through the grace of the Divine Mother. So when we begin to realize from the level of embodiment that we live in a unified field, that this is a scientific law, unified physics, we live in a unified field that everything in the cosmos is being held together through this invisible, kind of like a spider net fabric. There's a fabric in this cosmos that, that connects everything together. Scientific fact. And then, of course, all the mystics and sages and avatars have been saying this for millennia. There is only one being expressing itself in infinite forms. When that realization of, of law of unity becomes more and more alive in our lives, we begin to see sacred in everything, sacredness in our body, sacredness in our soul, sacredness in our environment, sacredness in animals and plants, in everything that is alive, the law of unity. And this is why psychedelics are so powerful in this process of the law of unity, beloveds. Why psychedelics are such a crucial piece in realization, because whether it is through visionary plants, such as ayahuasca or San Pedro or psilocybin, or whether it's through different, um, different elements such as LSD, right? Why those 
tools when they are properly used when they used with respect because they are medicines they are so helpful because they instantaneously dissolve the illusion of separation the egoic structure that's so invested in protecting a separate identity that is an illusion I will never forget my very first LSD trip it was right after my divorce and I will write about it very soon but to tell you briefly for me it was the most powerful experience of my life that one hit of LSD that lasted for 10 hours for me just ripped this illusion of separation and gave me this visceral experience of unified field in which I am an integral part of the field when you experience oneness all fear and concern about death and loss of life and the fear of tomorrow all of it just shoo, leaves your system and you're forever altered you got a glimpse of divinity while being in a physical form you're forever altered this is why such incredible spiritual teachers such as Ramdas and Alan Watts all have been a huge believers as a as a crucial role of psychedelics that play in our lives because a lot of times our ego construct is so baked in like a cement that the soul cannot break through so we need the heavy lifting of heavy lifting liftings of psychedelics to shake egoic structure to give the soul like an entry point right of course in indigenous traditions they have it as a rite of passage that before a young boy becomes a man they will drink a sacred brew a shamanic visionary brew to give this young boy young girl a true perception to open their spiritual eyes so they're prepared to build a life that is in deep communion with nature right so the first is the law of oneness law of unity when e my favorite phrase from this one course that I taught three years ago sovereign mind if everything is one nothing is in the way if everything is one beloved nothing is in the way right so my invitation for you to begin to play play with this principle when you walk on the street silently say to your mind whenever you meet another person you are another me and smile you meet another person you are another me you are another me you are another me and really walk this is will be your meditation that will radically accelerate your consciousness right so when we begin to remember this law of unity our choices our habits what is important everything big everything goes through massive metamorphosis right we begin to realize whoa intention that makes sense because if I am connected to everything at the same time then my thoughts move at the speed of light then telepathy is as natural as breathing and if everything is one that I am a part of this 
enormous holistic system that is intelligent, omnipresent, completely awake, aware of itself, knowing of every moving part, And all I am being asked to is to cultivate a state of harmony with this greater field that I'm a part of. All I'm being asked of is do my part to harmonize my field. So when I move through my day, I don't add a chaotic waves of fear or anxiety or worry. But I move with the conscious unified field and I add harmony. I add vibrations of my alive beating heart, right? Whew. Wow. Then we realize that our consciousness is our true contribution to humanity. Moment by moment by moment. What do you vibrate? Because your vibration affects entire cosmos in a very real way. Second essential law, the law of rhythm. The law of rhythm, beloveds. The law of rhythm. Rhythm, right? We live in artificial rhythm. We live in artificial time. We live in artificial pressure. We live in artificial values. We can either align to a life-affirming rhythm or life-depleting rhythm. When we begin to reconnect to the sacred feminine, this wisdom of her rhythm becomes very intriguing and interesting for us. This is the time where where you begin to question this Western obsession with achievement, with going faster and faster and faster and doing more and buying more and, and even becoming more. And maybe through a burnout, you begin to question this narrative this racing against artificial time, and you begin to dive into the wisdom of your heart, and that's where the teachings of the second law of the sacred feminine, the law of rhythm, begin to find you. You begin to get really drawn to the teachings of Tao, the way, being like water, accomplishing everything without effort, without rushing, without obsessive compulsion, and you begin to shed. This is a great purification of your consciousness in this stage because you begin to learn from the greatest teacher in cosmos, goddess nature. You begin to realize, wow, there is four distinct seasons. There is four cycles of creation. There is birth, growth, decline, and death. I am a part of the cycle of creation. I am a part of nature. So I am going to go through the process of birth, growth, decline, and death on a spiral of my incarnation. When I am in resistance to the cycle of decline and death, I suffer. When I only embrace and celebrate the birth and growth, my life becomes emotionally shallow. Because in the darkness, I find the richness and the depth of my being. 
in my willingness to endure and to welcome the unknown without getting lost in the panic of my mental world, I find my truth. I find my sense of inner stability and certainty. Oh, the law of rhythm. You begin to learn the, the cycle of increase and the cycle of decrease, and there is nothing personal about it. When there is increase in your life, there is, it's not personal. You're aligning to the wave of the collective that is called increase, increase, increase. So stay humble on your increase because you know decrease is coming. And the cycle of increase double down on your devotion, adoration of the sacred feminine and generosity of your heart. Don't lose your focus. Don't get lost in the arrogance of your ego that believes that you are the one who is increasing things in your life. <laughs> right? Because you know decrease is coming to test your embodiment to test where is your true abundance coming from. To test your character. The cycle of decrease is always a preparation for the next cycle of increase that is offered to you again as an invitation to test. Are you ready for a much bigger service? Are you ready to be a much bigger vessel for the sacred feminine? So rhythm, beloveds, rhythm. This is why when sacred feminine begins to draw you in, you begin to crave, crave time in nature, walking, breathing, feeling the earth with your bare feet. Maybe there is a spontaneous desire to move away from the city and to be in a quieter environment because you want to hear the voice of the mother. You want to hear the true wisdom. This is the time where you are fine tuning and finding a more natural rhythm. Your soul magnetism comes online. The more you dive within, the more magnetic you become without. You keep shedding and shedding and shedding. You keep remembering where your true sense of worthiness is coming through. Where is your true stability is coming through. When we begin to live in alignment with natural rhythm, we begin to live joyful lives, lives filled with beauty. We begin to exit the race of artificial time. You begin to live more and more outside of linear time and create, weave, express, cultivate the timelessness of your soul. Your days become longer in a way because the less you rush to the next thing, the more you realize all your opportunities, all possibilities, all answers are always here in this moment. When we are present, we are in the presence of divinity. When you align your consciousness and your life to the rhythm, to the correct, natural, organic rhythm, you begin to glow from within. 
And people say, you're becoming so radiant. You're becoming so radiant. What's happening? You smile inside because it's a reflection of your inner that inner harmony inner harmony where everything becomes a meditation everything becomes filled with meaning you begin to decode signs and clues and symbols you begin to realize that this awakened life what i mean by that you know those 12 hours or 14 hours that you are awake is not different from those eight hours that you are dreaming you begin to ask yourself what is dream and what is reality this is where your mystical consciousness comes online you begin to activate your mystical eye and you begin to cultivate this deep intimate relationship with the one beloved the great beloved and leads, leads me to the third essential principle and it's called love of the dance Oh, beloved, love of the dance. This is also a very um, this this naming comes to us from the Sufi tradition, where Sufism is a mystical branch of Islam where great teachers such as Ruf, Rumi or Hafiz or Kabir came from, right? Sufism is, is spirituality that is rooted in pure devotion of the great beloved. Everything seen as the beloved. Everything seen as divinity. Everything, every act, every move is a form of devotional prayer. So when you see those uh, mystical dancers, dervishes, when they dance in these white outfits and they become the dance, right? And they get lost in the dance. They become the dancer, the dance, and the one who is being danced. This is the law, the essential principle of the sacred feminine love of the dance where when we surrender our life to the great spirit to divine mother to the sacred feminine utterly completely out of pure devotion we return to that relationship with the sacred feminine. Our life becomes a dance. Then the unknown, what is happening, what is not happening, what may happen becomes a sort of less of something that we need or must figure out through our logic. It becomes a mystery that we are willingly enter. Entire cosmos becomes a mystical dance floor. And our only invitation is to show up to the dance floor every single day and enjoy and celebrate the dance. I was listening to um, another of my favorite teacher last night. I, was, I stayed up really late last night uh, studying with this incredible teacher. And she was sharing the wisdom from 
this African tribe, the shamanic African tribe that live in the most profound intimacy with nature. And their way of always being in harmony with the great intelligence is celebration. Interesting, right? Celebration. They say that when we celebrate our life, no matter how it looks, especially when you don't fully accept your life as it is right now and your mind pushes your body and your awareness into some imaginary future where you think it's going to get different and you find your liberation or your joy later on. This shamanic tradition say, when we celebrate, we align, we align to the great sacred feminine who created everything for one reason only, adventure of consciousness, an adventure in joy, not adventure in this turmoil and sadness and suffering and bleak reality. Humanity is deeply responsible for what is on the planet. Humanity is responsible for what is on the planet. But humanity also holds the key to our liberation. And that key is an awakening of every single one of our remembrance of the sacred feminine within us. So I really love this message of celebration Yes, we live in the times that looks like great apocalypses. But apocalypses, beloved, if we translate that word, it means a break down to break through. The old egoic structures that have been built on artificial values, artificial time, artificial story of humanity's origin must collapse and those of you and I and everybody who is listening on the level of awareness that you understand why we're here because we're here to support the humanity's birth we are right now in the birth canal we are in the birth canal as humanity and if you ever witnessed birth, there is nothing certain about the process of birth. And the certainty that I return to is my certainty that the sacred feminine, which is the spirit of grace, right? The spirit of grace. I love the transmission of Richard Rudd when he said, we all felt a soft, a soft touch of grace in our lives. Where you find yourself at the point of losing all hope. Maybe you've been through some really scary health challenge. Maybe you lost a child. Maybe you lost a loved one. Usually when we are on our knees is through some deep, deep soul shattering loss, health, death, collapse of certain structure in our life. And that's where we meet grace a true spirit of grace that comes to us and ignite our soul so we are going through the process of a rebirth like a phoenix rising from the ashes. If you experience that on individual level, 
you know it is possible for humanity on the level of collective. Right now, we are burning to the ashes. And it is so easy to get completely overwhelmed by the sight of this burning. It's easy to begin to doubt about the future of humanity as a human race. And I am here to encourage all of us, you and I, to take the feelings of overwhelm and turn it around into the deepest fire of devotion. That we anchor our consciousness in this intimate relationship to the sacred feminine, to the divine mother, and we return to her. We return our attention to her. We return our devotion to her. We return our life to her. And we say, I desire to be the vessel to be your emissary of light right here, right now, in my human form, in my human life, in my imperfect reality, which is divinely perfect, in my sense of not readiness, not enoughness, not completeness, this, all of that, I surrender and I am asking you, Great Mother, how can I be useful in the time where I witness humanity burning to the ground? How can I be of service to support the vision of this Phoenix rebirth? What is my role? What is my assignment? What is my contribution? And I'm willing to let go of this obsession about who is right and who is wrong and who to believe and who to follow, I know that my heart is my compass. And that's where I find my strength and my confidence and my communication with the sacred feminine. So beloved hearts, the future of humanity, either very, very bleak or very, very brilliant. Both possibilities exist at the same time. Both possibilities exist at the same time. I am available for both possibilities. I am ready to die any moment. I train my consciousness to understand death from a very, very intimate way. And I invite every single person to contemplate on death, on the reality that you and I are dying. As a physical carbon beings, so we are dying every day. We are closer and closer to our death. And our time on this planet is very brief. Yes, reincarnation is a very, very real part of our life. So we shall be back again and again at different forms, at different planets and different planes of reality. But while we hear this level of awareness, let's not waste the minute of our life. Let's not waste a minute of our breath. Let's ignite the courage of a lion heart within us. Let's ignite the devotion to the sacred feminine. Let's ignite the power of our ability to envision, to act, to serve, to speak our truth, to comfort those who don't have that awareness. And more than anything, to be the pillars, energetic pillars of coherence. When you read this beautiful book, The Mother, you look how short it is. This is the masterpiece that left to humanity by great mystic Ayurobindo. This is a masterpiece. When I traveled to Peru in three days, 
I will be holding this little book through entire journey. I will be standing in lines to, to get in, checked in. And while I'm standing in line, I read a paragraph. Until one day I memorized this book and able to recite it. Because remember, the power of Maya, the power of this collective dream is very strong and it's also a part of Divine Mother. That we easily get pulled into forgetting. So it's through devotion to remembrance where you say, I desire to remember fully who am I, why I am here, what is the organic natural rhythm? Where is my joy? How can, can I celebrate my life? How can I witness and feel the suffering of the world and not get lost in it? But to realize that suffering is for purification and with every wave of suffering that comes in the world comes equal amount of grace. So you don't need to carry anybody on your shoulders. You get to walk the path yourself, hold the field, vibrate a coherent energy and anchor yourself, anchor yourself into a deep relationship with your heart. That is my deepest, deepest um, experience, beloveds, that we are here to remember that it's all Leela, divine play, divine theater. We're all actors at different levels of our remembrance. Your personality is a temporary reality that just for one incarnation only, you will never be this personal you ever again. After death, you go and merge into the ocean of consciousness, right? Until you're ready to be reborn again and finish the lessons that you may be been running away from every lesson that we don't face we gotta come back and return and, and face it again right the seeds of our actions today plan the karma of our future so on this note beloveds it's been a one hour one hour what i would like to share with you is that if you feel drawn to the sacred feminine, the first step is to begin communicating to the mother. Now I'm going to go very practical steps. And it can begin as communicating with your heart. You begin to talk to your heart as a living field of intelligence. If you're already doing that, next step is Divine Mother, Divine Mother, I want to know you. I want to know you. Who are you? Reveal yourself to me. And if your prayer is sincere enough, if your prayer is pure enough, Divine Mother cannot hold herself back. She will rush to you as the spirit of grace and begins this powerful alchemical work in your life. Yes, she may come to you as Goddess Kali, to dismantle all false structures of your reality. And when you find yourself in that process, do not fear. Her fierceness is an expression of her love because her only goal is a full liberation of your soul. And once the process of purification and liberation gets going, you're always going to be given the sweet nectar of her love to nourish your soul, to find this sense of deep, deep mystical awareness where you begin to remember yourself as a spirit being here on a very particular assignment. And your only job is to show up on the dance floor and eventually to fall in love with the dance, fall in love 
with chaos, fall in love with uncertainty, fall in love with the winds of change. Only when we begin to see this reality as an adventure of consciousness, we begin to enjoy the adventure. We are meant to be in enjoyment of this great adventure, beloveds. Being in a human form and to realize your divinity is the most sacred gift. It's the most sacred honor. Angels pray to be in the place of humans one day and to experience this profound journey of being fully divine and fully human at the same time. I love you so much, so much, beloveds. I love you so much. So I am beyond ecstatic to return to the place that is truly a spiritual home for my heart, which is Peru. And I'm so grateful that Divine Mother allowed and blessed this adventure. We are heading to Peru. I am going a little bit earlier than my group. I'm leading on Tuesday. So this is my last live stream until probably three weeks. So I wanted to share this deep transmission to, to remind all of us that we are truly held in the, in the heart of the Divine Mother. And she will receive nothing but our absolute surrender, our absolute devotion, because she wants nothing but the full liberation of our consciousness. So we awaken that divine child within. This is a flowering of our relationship with the sacred feminine. Divine child comes online, this new kind of consciousness that has the capacity to imagine and to create, to play with spiritual principles, to have a capacity to find deep source of joy and guidance and fulfillment from within. Divine Child, this is the vibration of consciousness that comes online when the sacred feminine initiates us into her mystery. So a practical way, start connecting to the Divine Mother, start connecting to the earth, start connected to the power of your body, the sacredness of your body, the sacredness of your sensuality, your sexuality, your voice, your heart, the way you move through this world, you begin to cherish, cherish your existence. You begin to live in the presence. You begin to let go of these truly useless worry about tomorrow because tomorrow never comes it's always now it's now it's now it's now and it's now and in that now you're always safe isn't it so and even when you didn't feel safe something was still holding you and protecting you and watching over you and in the hindsight when you look back at those moments where you didn't feel safe you still have been deeply guided. And that's where you begin to let go and let the goddess, let the mother of your soul to pull you closer to her cosmic heart and to say, my child, I have dreamed your soul into existence. And if you let me, I will move through your life, through your heart. I will become 
your ally. I will become your source of strength, your wisdom. And I will guide you every step of the way. This is what the sacred feminine would whisper to our hearts when we begin our great return to her. Divine Feminine. I am another you, you are another me, there is only one consciousness, the future of humanity depends on the choices that you and I make today.